And this brings us to Freeway Ricky Ross. He started dealing cocaine in 1979, then he moved into crack, then he worked his way up to becoming one of the biggest crack dealers in L.A. He was arrested in 1996 and given a life sentence. But in 2009, he was given parole and released. And we thought, here is a perfect person to run these economic theories by and see if they check out. Let's do it. Theory number one, making drugs illegal drives up the price. Check. The most I ever made in one day was $3 million. Went through my hands. Wow. I could make off of a million bucks. I could make anywhere from 400000 to 200000 profit. It varied to who I was selling to and uh, uh, what time of the month it was. You know, a lot of variables on how much I made. If I was giving it to them on credit, stuff like that. So, But I was sure to make 200000 off of every million, and sometimes I could make as much as 400000 Let me just ask you, like, how how much of the cost of the drug that you were selling was because it was illegal, I guess? Probably, ooh, we maybe a thousand times. Uh, you can probably get a kilo of cocaine over in uh, uh, Colombia, Peru, for maybe three hundred dollars, or maybe even less than that. You know, if it wasn't illegal, because maybe the farmers would probably would sell it for for uh, what it costs for a head of lettuce, because it grows over there. You know, wow. So, I mean, the price probably would drop dramatically. You probably could get a kilo for what it costs about a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe cheaper. Keep in mind, Rick bought his kilos of cocaine for $10,000. All right, so next we ran another part of the theory by him, that at least some of the money he's getting is going to increased crime. Again, check. Well, I had a crew. You know, I had a crew of anywhere from 30 to 40 guys. That varied, too, from what was going on, you know, how, how good business was, uh, how many rock houses I was running at the time. You always had an appearance of toughness. Uh-huh. And and I did. You know, I had guys around me that were ruthless and were tough. You know, if I gave the word, they would hurt you. How how much how how many guns did your operation have? Who knows? <laughs> we bought guns regularly because guys would throw guns out the window when the cops get behind them, and, and we lose guns all the time. And it was mandatory uh, when 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 we were on the street. Like if we had to park playing basketball, we had to be strapped. Or if we had my uh, tire shop where we sold drugs from, then we would have guns there. Now, it's really amazing the level of expenses that a big-time drug dealer has. I mean, the drug money wouldn't just be for his crew. He would spread it around. I mean, his drug money would find its way into all sorts of other illicit activities in the neighborhood. For instance, he had money that he'd just distribute to the big players around the hood. Uh, you know, I had a fund also, you know, where, where, where I take care of what's called the big homies, you know, uh, these are the guys that, when I grew up, were the shot callers, the guys that ran the neighborhood, and, and you know, I took care of them. In my neighborhood, anybody uh, can get killed at any time. And for me to walk around the streets the way I did would be dangerous for a lot of people. Most people couldn't do what I did. You know, they couldn't walk around South Central Los Angeles in the middle of a uh, Hoover, Crip Gang, or the Swans, and live the way I live, you know, free and open, uh, going to car washes. You know, they kidnap drug dealers in mm-hmm. South Central. And uh, I had a special type of past that most people don't get, and that's because of my good ties that I shared in my wealth. So you basically, it was sort of like you were paying protection money to these people, right? Absolutely. You can call it protection money or big homie money or whatever, but it's all the same thing. Absolutely. But it was it was money going to people who who, who didn't sell drugs. But, but who would, they, who would they be were robbers? Yeah, they were robbers. They was killers, jackers as we call them. Absolutely, these guys didn't mind going to jail. So clearly, the academics are right here. Drug money goes to crime. I guess that's not a big surprise.